I think the top recommendations would emphasize avoiding tobacco in any form. It would emphasize uh, obesity control, that is maintaining a normal body weight, prudent dietary strategies, which we'll get into and we'll talk about, avoidance of too much sun exposure, and out if you drink alcohol, drink it in moderation, and those are the key ones in terms of primary cancer prevention through lifestyle. And there's no guarantee that what you do is going to ultimately prevent cancer. It may delay it, maybe delay it by many years, but there's no guarantees. But the best you can do is reduce your risk and optimize your odds of being healthy as long as you can. We all know that genetics are important. Genetics do affect our risk for cancer. We enter into this risk profile with different genes. So the best you can do is modify that risk through diet and through other lifestyle interventions that the evidence suggests will really reduce that risk. So in terms of nutritional strategies, there's a lot of data that's coming from all over the world. There are people studying different diets all over the world in terms of how they relate to cancer risk. And the worldwide perspective is important because we have very different rates of cancers around the world. And when people move from one population to another, we find that their risk changes to, a, to be very similar to the country where they've come to. And so what that means is that the lifestyle that you have influences your rate for cancer for sure. That's been shown by international comparisons, by migrant studies, things like that. It means that, let's say, that your genes say that you're predetermined to uh, get breast cancer at some point in your life. Uh, if you have one type of an environment, you may end up getting breast cancer in your 40s. If you have another type of environment, you may be able to delay that into your 70s or your 80s or to the point where you've died of some other cause. So really, when we talk about cancer prevention, in many cases, especially for people who are genetically susceptible, it may mean really delaying that diagnosis and delaying it further and further and further out until hopefully you're not diagnosed at all with cancer. So if you look at the data that's come in from all around the world, and I think that's important to look at that global perspective, um, there's an organization called the World Cancer Research Fund that recently comprehensively reviewed all of the literature from all over the world on nutrition and cancer. And you can take literally thousands of studies and you can distill the message down into what those recommendations are into a few basic concepts. And it turns out it's pretty simple. And the few basic messages that come out from this large comprehensive review of the literature is that a plant-based diet, one that's really rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, is associated with reducing the risk of a variety of different cancers. When you look at fruits and vegetables, for the last two decades, we have tried to identify certain compounds, certain chemicals found in fruits and vegetables, naturally occurring chemicals, what we call phytochemicals, that might be responsible for these observed cancer prevention effects. The research has actually been fairly disappointing in the human setting, and that is you can't replace a variety of fruits and vegetables with a supplement that contains isolated compounds from those same fruits and vegetables. So I think the stronger message that we've learned in the last 10 years is that you can't correct not consuming fruits and vegetables by taking nutritional supplements, and that has come through loud and clear in the most recent research. The other thing we've learned is that you know, this notion that if you take a lot of something, whether it be antioxidants or whether it be soy, if you take a lot of it, you can reduce your risk more, has actually been thrown out. And that what we've learned is sometimes higher doses of these agents that we think might be beneficial actually turn out to be harmful. The message is pretty simple, you know, is that a prudent diet, which is high in plant foods, low in red meat, um, is our best advice in terms of dietary strategies to reduce your risk of getting cancer.